Hello, welcome to Candy Shop Yarns, where everything is sugar-free and high in fiber. I am Deborah, your confectioner extraordinaire. I'm the owner of Candy Shop Yarns, and this is the ultimate destination for knitting and crochet enthusiasts. I invite you to join in the community of crafters that have a sweet tooth for fun by hitting the subscribe button. So let's get started on episode 18 of the Candy Shop Yarns Makers Vlog. Today is September 7th, 2023, and in this episode, I am going to have a life update. I have knitting content, um, no sewing or crochet today or other types of um, fiber arts. And I have some happy mail and I have shop news. And at the very end, I have a giveaway announcement. So you wanna stick around for that. This is take two. I just recorded almost the entire episode on slow motion. I was wondering why my battery died so fast. Now I know why. <laughs> so the batteries that I have left are, they, they don't last as long. So I'll have to switch those out as we go, but that's okay. We're gonna start all over again. I just had, you know, a practice run. Let's get started on life update. So I have three daughters. Uh, my oldest two are married and so that leaves one more at home who is 16 and we homeschool and so it is a very different experience homeschooling one child versus three and she also just is very different than her other siblings it's it's different when you have just one at home i was a middle child so i was never i never experienced being the youngest one, the only one at home. And I haven't been a parent of an only child. So it's, it's all new to me how we do things. Um, it's amazing how quickly everything changed. So, so we do things in a very different way. But one of the things we were not going to start um, school until mid September, but that has changed because um, just scheduling and interest. I mean, if somebody is interested in learning something, you don't say, well, we got to wait for a couple weeks. You'd start right then. <laughs> you all know how that goes. If you have a project you want to do, you're like cast on right now. Don't wait for two months because then you're like, eh, I lost interest in it. So, <laughs> so we have begun. Um, one of the classes is a class that I have um, organized with Nadia, that's my daughter, her best friend and mother, who is also my good friend. We together are doing a worldviews and religions class where we are learning about different worldviews and the religions of the world so that we can better understand our neighbors and people around us because we don't all live and think alike. So it helps us to be able to communicate more effectively, work together, and just be um, a more well-rounded person. So we started that one last week. And one of the things that we did, I wanted to do something really fun to kind of kick off the class because it's not really a topic that they're gonna be super excited about, <laughs> but it's a fascinating topic. Um, but we were learning about um, the Hindu religion. And so we ended our class with our own mini um, holy, if that's what it's called, H or how it's pronounced, H-O-L-I, or color festival, where you wear white. We just did a white shirt. We didn't do all white, everything. And then you have colorful chalk powders that you toss into the air and you end up getting covered in colorful chalk. Um, so we had lots of fun with that. Um, I had chalk in my ear that I couldn't get out and up my right nostril for days. <laughs> and we had white shirts that I just went and bought the cheapest white shirt that we could find because I knew it was going to get ruined, but it ended up dyeing it. I wish I could have set the dyes how they were on the shirt, but I really had no idea how because it was part cotton, mostly polyester, I think. And I don't know how to work with that fiber content. So anyways, I just washed it to see what would happen. And it ended up this really pale periwinkle blue, very pretty. So, <laughs> so 
So we started off with that um, to start off our school year and it was really fun. Um, then it was my daughter's birthday, my oldest daughter, Claire, and I gave her her birthday gift, which if you have been around for a while, then you may have seen the episode where I talked about at the beginning of the year, I woke up on January 1st, like I was asleep and like woke up, I'm going to finish all my unfinished projects. It was like that. It was like this determination. <laughs> Like it must be done and I started it right then and it was all spurred on by all my unfinished quilts because they take up a lot of space in my um, sewing room and they've been sitting there for so long. I had so many and I have since finished all of them that I have started. I have a quilt top that my great great aunt, maybe third great aunt, um, had made and I started to finish that one, but I don't know that it, I'm ever going to be finishing it, but I, it, it was a star of Bethlehem and it was just the star and I ended up squaring it off. So that's done. So that's at least done. It may, may someday be made into a quilt, but that one is not one I'm worried about. And I have a quilt that I want to make, but I haven't started. But I was talking about Projects that have been begun with the intention of finishing that hadn't been finished. So one of those was a quilt that Claire started when she was maybe 15 years old. And I remember when I was young, I was maybe 12 years old. I lived really close to my cousin. Um, I mean, maybe half a mile away or less. So in the summer when I was around 12, I walked regularly in the summer months to my cousin's house and she and I worked on piecing a quilt top. Her mother, who is my aunt, who also taught me a lot of what I know about quilting. She was an avid quilter and so she helped us get started and it was just like four inch squares or something that we sewed together with scraps, <laughs> something like that. Well, we didn't ever finish the quilt and several years later, she gave me the quilt top unfinished. And several years after that, I looked at it one day and went, why am I keeping this? And I threw it away. I could just kick myself for being stupid like that because I would love to have the first quilt that I made or that I could have made. I started making it with my cousin, but I threw it away. Makes me really upset. So anyways, I did not want my daughter to have that same experience. She started making the quilt. She got the center panel done and then was burned out on it and was like, eh, quilting's not for me. And she went to throw it away. Well, I saw that and I grabbed it. I collected all the fabric she had used that I had left over. She was making it with just whatever I had in stash and I held on to it. Well, fast forward five, six, seven, seven years. Um, it was still sitting there unfinished and I decided to finish it. So I did and then I gave it to her on her birthday and that was really fun. Okay, last in my life update, there's all sorts of things, but this is a really fun one. Um, my knit group, we have a knit night group. There's 11 of us and we get together once a month at, um, we just rotate taking turns hosting at various members homes. And last night we had our annual swap, like craft supply swap. Um, Courtney, she hosts that each year and that's really fun. And I brought all of the items that I'd been holding on to to swap, things that maybe were leftovers from projects, um, yarns that I dyed that ended up not going into my shop, whatever, you know, just random things. And I was like, I'm going to take these there and I'm not going to look at the table because I don't need anything. Well, I... I didn't take my own advice. <laughs> I 
came home with a bag. Oh, wait, let me get it. A bag full of things. So let me show you what I got. First of all, I got oh, a Yarn Swift. So I already have a Yarn Swift. And everybody else in my um, knitting group all has a Yarn Swift. I didn't want to take this if somebody else needed one, but nobody else needed one, so I took it. So now I have a second one, which I'm very happy about because um, it means that it, I can wind off smaller amounts of yarn directly from the Swift, like from one Swift to another. So I can put them both up and I can wind one while it unwinds on the other, and that will save me a lot of time because if I ever need to do that, I usually have to wind it into a cake first and then from the cake back onto the Swift because I want it to be in a hank, not into a ball or a cake. Um, I am saving up to invest in a rescainer, but I want, there's a specific one I want that rescains multiple skeins at a time and it's electric and it counts your yardage. So I'm saving up for that. In the meantime, this will help. <laughs> okay, what else? This, this is why I ended up going to the table. I wasn't going to go to that table at all, but out of the corner of my eye, I just saw these colors and they drew me over there. So let me show you. Oh, I've made a mess throwing this in the bag now. Oh, it doesn't look so good now. Here's the colors. Oh, those are so fun. I love these. There's two 50 gram balls, so there's 100 grams. This is the yarn brand. And it says it's color S78. Do you need to go out, Luna? Here. Okay. So I went immediately online and started searching for more of this yarn. I love it. I have not been able to find any more. So I'll have to keep a lookout because I thought it would be so cute to make a sweater for my granddaughter with. If I can't find any more of uh, this colorway, I know that there's other colorways that I can find of this yarn and I could see if I could find one that is a solid that goes well with it and I could do stripes of, for a sweater to alternate. If not, I could make a hat or I could make mittens or something, but oh, I just think it's so cute. Love it. Okay, so it's it's that yarn's fault that I went to that table at all. So I came home with the Swift and that yarn and some more. So look at these beautiful skeins. This is... Um, Stitch Stuff Yarn. You can find that at stitchstuffyarn.com. This one has very mild speckles. This one is a solid. I don't see a colorway name on here. It says it is 100% superwash merino, 352 yards for 100 grams. So that looks like it's like a sport weight yarn. I think that's cute. Any suggestions of what you do with 200 grams of sport weight yarn? Once again, I could make a sweater for my granddaughter, but it would be fun to see if there's some other suggestions. I just oh, love those colors so much. And I really love this label, that graphic, I love it. And then the last yarn that I came home with was some cotton yarn. And it is Cotton Kings 8 for 100 grams, 372 yards. Look at that. Those are so cute together. Once again, I'm not quite sure what I'd make with this. I have some ideas, but not 100% sure. I have some thoughts. I just loved those colors. 
love those colors. I'm gonna have to see if that's yarn that's available still as well. Okay, and then there was one other thing that I got that was not um, fiber related. It was a book. I love this. I love the movie Up. It is one of my favorites. And um, I have a little side room in my basement that is like a library slash kids playroom and in the bookshelf i have like a center area that i have decorated with up themed items and i've got like carl's um goggles that he wore when he was young i've got um i want to say russell but that's not russell no, it was Russell. Okay, Russell's like adventurer's backpack. I have a little cloche that has um, a miniature house, like a house with the balloons. I have grape soda pin. So I've got so I've got the mailbox. Did I mention that I've got the mailbox? I didn't like the mailbox from their house. So this is cute to put down there, but what I really want to do is on in the little room down there have a tiny couch for the grandkids and I always put out a different book and stuffed animal on the chair on the couch. And when my kids were young, um, I used to collect children's picture books and the characters that went with them. And when I'd read them the story, and they would hold the little character and cuddle that and it was just so fun to have that so i'm going to have to get probably kevin if i can find kevin i want to find a stuffed kevin to go with this and i'll put this down on that little couch so that's what i brought home from knit night i love my knitting group we have the most fun next month is our annual um swap reveal we have a mystery swap where we do a project for somebody else in our group and we reveal the project and mine i have restarted so many times i'm determined to make a specific item and i can't wait to share it with you i know i'm gonna make it work but i have to recast on today i was just waiting for a tool to be delivered and it sounds like it just was so i can restart it Fingers crossed it's the right size this time, but if that doesn't work, I have to scrap that and start all over because we did this back in March and it was like two days after I got the yarn, I decided on the project and I got started. And we are now in the beginning of September and I'm starting all over. <laughs> but I love our knit group. It's so much fun. We have the best time. Let's get started on projects. I have quite a few finished projects. I've already shared this in the first go around, so I don't wanna like speed through it all because I feel like I've done it all already. So I'm gonna take a deep breath. Let's start with the Wildflower Pullover. This pattern is by Bluebird Pines Shop on Etsy. I knit the size 2T, but I made adjustments where I removed Okay, first I added two rows of ribbing on the bottom, but I reduced, I removed six rows in the body. It was too long and narrow. I did not like that. Also, I decreased, let me see, I could actually see because when it's so bulky, you can really tell. I decreased one, Two. I decreased two times as suggested. I skipped a decrease and then I decreased again one more time. And then I did the final two decreases right before the cuff because it was gonna just be too narrow for how bulky the yarn was. So I slowed down the decrease. I didn't do any more until right before the cuff. And I also made the cuff longer because I wanted to make sure that it would really shrink in like pull it in i didn't want it to flare out because it being such a bulky yarn like it has a tendency to do that also this yarn this is yarn b alpaca twist i bought this at the hobby 
you know, hobby craft store. This is 90% acrylic, 10% um, alpaca. So this can go in the washer, probably the dryer. I don't know. I don't know all those symbols. Do you know all those symbols? I think one of them, the triangle that has the X through it means not the dryer. Not sure. Um, oh, Luna wants to come in now. Okay, I have to step over everything. Um, it took one full ball and then about a quarter of another to make this pattern with this yarn. It is a bulky weight yarn and it used the largest needles that I have. Luckily these needles, I got gauge, um, which they are US size 11, eight millimeters. I mean, that's a chunky needle, but because it was chunky, it went very fast, even with having to rip things back because I didn't like the length and having to make adjustments here and there, like it still went very quickly. Um, you do pick up stitches, so you knit you knit the front and the back separately, seam up the sides and the shoulders, and then pick up stitches and knit the sleeve. And the picking up stitches is the part that always takes me the most time to get around to doing. But I'm like, this is such a quick project. Just do it, just do it. <laughs> so I did it, I got it done quickly. And this will be going in my gift drawer for Christmas. I've got a good stash in my gift drawer because I started back in January. Like I, I was determined that I was just going to work on things all throughout the year and just keep adding to it so that it wasn't a stress at the end of the year. So I'm really glad that I've done that. Um, but I've got a good amount left of this yarn. I'd love suggestions on what to make. I just need lots of suggestions. What to make with all of those other yarns? What would you do with this? 100 grams. So I didn't, I don't have 100 grams left. I probably have 70 grams left of this, maybe 75. I already tried doing a hat, but I tried the wrong hat and the wrong gauge. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, no, I don't think I'd knit matching mittens to wear. Okay, let's see. Next up, I shared um, a hat that I had started for my husband for Christmas, the Muscle Burr hat by Isolde Teague. This is a pattern that has been circulating for quite some time now. I have already knit a hat that was a very similar construction years ago for my husband. Um, this hat, I'm not going to pull it apart because of how I have something together, but it it opens up. You cast on on one end and you essentially knit a hat top down. And then you keep knitting and decrease and it's like knitting a hat bottom up, but it's connected in the middle and then you stuff one side into the other and it's reversible. And I have knit the same type of hat, but Instead, what it had me do was do a provisional cast on, knit a hat up, and then pick up those stitches, remove that provisional cast on, and knit another hat, and you tuck it in. And he wore that hat for a long time until it got destroyed in the washer one time. So um, I really didn't have interest in knitting this one because I did not like it with a folded brim. Most of the time when I saw it, it looked really sloppy, floppy, but then I have seen quite a few lately that looked really nice, especially my friends um, from my knit night, Margaret. She brought one that she had knit with this yarn and I immediately had to order some because it feels so heavenly and it looked so good in this pattern that I was sold. So here's the yarn and then I'll tell you more about the hat. The yarn is Kinross 4-ply from Wee County Yarns. There's two different labels here. One, I don't know which one's the newer one and which is the older one, but I used um, Invera Ray and Pewter. 
those are the two yarns that I had. They're 50 gram balls and I have a little more than half left of each one. So it didn't take a full 50 grams to knit the hat how I did. I knit the size, let's see, I forgot already. Adult large. I knit the adult large hat, but I did not give it any um, room for folding up or any slouchiness because my husband doesn't like that. This will be for him. I measured one of his favorite hats and I made it according to that measurement and it works perfectly. This is not my size, but you can see that it doesn't have any extra really but it's lovely. So I added a little tag. I forgot that I had these, honestly. I ordered these maybe six months, a year ago. It says, yes, your majesty, on one side, as a nod to um, Alice in Wonderland, but with my kids, um, as a joke, I told them they needed to always call me your majesty and that they always had to respond with, yes, your majesty. So <laughs> just a joke in our family. And then on the other side, it says hand wash dry flat. So I ordered those tags from Birch and Cider on Etsy. And I ordered two different colors of tags. I got these kind of burgundy and then these kind of golden wood grain looking kind and I couldn't figure out if they were leather or not. I didn't think I ordered leather. I wanted something that was washable. I think these are like fake leather, like vinyl, just feeling them. And they come with little screws and one of them are um, like coppery and then the other one are like this darkened steel, but they have a screw head on it essentially and I needed something to screw it in and I found this little tiny um, eyeglass screwdriver that I had in my craft room. It was the perfect size to put in here and tighten it up. <laughs> I love it so much. So I just have it. I'm keeping that in with these tags. So love my tags. Glad I finally remembered that I had them because I wanted to use them to put on gifts. So I need to, I need to add one to this. Got to add one to this. Okay. Is that everything I was going to share about this? I think so. Try not to forget things. Let me look at my notes. As far as I know, that was everything. Okay. Next, I finished my Poolside Paradise socks. I have been talking about these for quite some time now because I started a pair of socks in the summertime, much earlier in the summertime, um, shortly after I released my, um, oh, this one is called, okay, I have Poolside Paradise Collection, and this one was called, I just forgot everything. What's the name of my collection? <laughs> this is really sad. I just shared all of this information and I have forgotten everything since already. Now I have to look up all of that. Okay, this one is called Poolside Paradise, but the name of the um, whole set is Pool Party. It's embarrassing. It's okay. So I started a pair earlier this year and I was using a pattern by Summerlee Knits if I remember correctly but it did not look good with this yarn so I decided to scrap that pattern and write my own because I've been wanting to do some of my own sock patterns. I started it, it was going great and then it started to pool um, around the heel turn, the, the gusset, which often happens when you have highly variegated yarns, but I realized this is not the right pattern for this. So I ripped it out again, and I decided to do a sock tube and um, 
just do an afterthought everything sock. So I did 64 stitch sock tube and then I picked up stitches and I knit four rounds of this purple colorway and switched to the yellow for the cuff. And then I picked up stitches for the toe. The toe and the heel are the same pattern. They're just a peasant heel or wedge toe. Um, and I did four rounds of yellow and switched to the purple. I did four rounds of purple here and switched to the yellow just to make it fun. And then with the rest of the yarn that I had left over in that sock tube, I actually recranked it into a sock tube with a smaller stitch count because I wanted to see what would happen with this pooling because it pools in a spiral pattern. And you can see up close that, you know, you have pink, teal, pink, teal stripes, and then speckly area, and then pink, teal, pink, teal, and speckly. Um, but when you look at it back a ways, it just looks like purple and kind of coral and speckles. But um, I thought, well, with a smaller stitch count, four stitches less, what will the pooling look like? It looked almost identical. Now I do have another cylinder, 72 stitch cylinder, but I didn't want to crank it another time. But that would be a big difference. Would definitely see some difference in the pooling. Um, but I didn't want to do that again. But that's what mine look like. So I now have a pair of socks, not for my gift drawer, but for my shop sample drawer. So, put that aside. Let's see. Okay, that's all of my finished projects. Now let's get into my works in progress. So in this drawstring bag basket, I thought it'd be like my picnic basket bag, but it, it's ended up being my sweater bag. <laughs> um, I have cast on the sweater that I've been talking about for far too long. The Home Sweater V-neck by Kadri. A basic pullover V-neck with wider sleeves and ribbing on the cuffs. It's, it's an oversized sweater, you know, with definitely some positive ease. It has a drop shoulder, um, just kind of a slouchy, relaxed look to it. I already tried gauge swatching and I was close. I thought I was spot on, but I wasn't. I was close, but I would need to go up one needle size, but it was already too thin of a gauge, like too floppy, too sheer. Um, it says it was using DK weight, but it doesn't use DK weight to get that gauge and have it look the same. The yarn that she used, um, definitely has a lot of fluff to it so that would fill in those spaces but I wasn't using that kind of yarn. Instead I had my daughter pick out the colorway she wanted which was nutmeg when I dyed it on the yarn that she wanted the, the base that um, I got which is a superwash merino and silk and stellina it ended up much more pale this is the nutmeg colorway is a much deeper, richer color. And she really wanted that deep, rich color. But with this, the silk, it ended up being quite a lot lighter. But she really likes this. It looks good. But I needed something else now because it was too thin. This is a DK weight, but um, I added some mohair in the nutmeg colorway to fill in those gaps. So I now have got gauge, except for my row count is off. My stitch count is right on. My row count is off by a little bit. So looking at it, it looks like it may end up making the sleeves a little bit um, lower. The V-neck could be a little bit lower because um, it takes me, I had to figure this all out before. Let's look at my gauge. Okay, 
The called for gauge is 16 stitches by 25 rows for a four inch by four inch square. I got 16 inches, 16 stitches by 23 rows. So I have fewer rows in the four inch swatch, which means that to get 25, it would be bigger. Yes, okay, I was right. Okay, so it means that, that for the number of rows that I have to knit in a repeat, it ends up being longer. So I hope it's gonna be okay. It's not dramatic, but by the time I finished so much of it, it definitely is by three quarters of an inch. Let's have a look again. 21 inches, nine inches, no, I can't remember. Okay, but I cast this on just less than a week ago and I already have the back. So you knit the back panel back and forth flat and put your stitches on hold. It's not the whole back panel, just to the underarm. Then you turn your work around and you pick up stitches on the shoulder and you do some um, shaping with uh, decreases and short row shaping and then increases to create the front left panel. And then I put those stitches on hold and now I've done the same on the right panel and I only have a couple of rows left till I've finished that and then you join it all together in the round and knit the body down in the round instead of flat. So this has taken me not a lot of time to get really the finicky part done. Like finicky as in I have to pay attention to it. I'm knitting back and forth not in the round so that means I'm switching from knitting to purling. I have to do shaping. I have to pick up stitches. I have to put things on hold. So it takes more thought and I have to be more um, paying attention. I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. Once I get it all in the round, it's just knit, 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 which means I can take it with me and do it in more situations like watching a show with my husband or um, on a road trip or things like that. But it also means that there's nothing of interest to keep you moving on it. So I feel like, you know, you're kind of like having a lot of things to pay attention to and do keeps your interest so that you get through it quickly. But then not having to think about it means I can do it in more places, but it's not as interesting. So I'm less interested in doing it. I don't know. But I want to get this done quickly because it's for a Christmas gift and I am the slowest sweater knitter I feel like in the universe. It usually takes me between three and seven months to knit a sweater. I think my average is like six months and I did not give myself six months to knit a sweater and I have other things I want to make. So I'm making good progress. It helps it's not fingering weight. It's essentially a worsted or heavy worsted weight. So that, you know, makes a difference. Um, it's definitely not bulky weight, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, going from knitting this bulky weight sweater directly to knitting this really fine gauge <laughs> was an adjustment. <laughs> oh boy. It was kind of like, how do I hold the yarn again? I don't remember how to do this. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't like to race through projects, but right now I am focused and driven on getting some things completed um, because they are for gifts. Um, let's see, along with that sweater, um, I came across a tool, a new tool that I've been using. And I was on Instagram and there was a reel that was suggested to me or something. And I don't remember who, like which account it was on. I cannot find it. So I cannot give them credit, unfortunately. Um, but it was for a row counter. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of row counters. I have a lot of different kinds of row counters. I don't use them. 
I think they're annoying. Like I hate having to pick, you know, stop in between each row and pick up the thing and click the thing. And then what if I need to unpick and go back several rows? Well, then I have to go through and re-click and get back to, or do the dial to get it back to where I need it to be. So I very often just have the pattern open next to me and make little hashtags and I, with pencil, because then I can erase it if I need to make adjustments. But then came across this one. I don't know how practical this one is, but it's fun. Look at this. Do you recognize what this is? The little poppets. So I just have this next to me when I'm working on something and I do one row and then pop, and pop, and pop. So it's fun. I don't know that it's extremely practical because it's big and I still have to stop and do that, but I don't, I don't know. I just think it's super fun. So this is a one to 100 um, counting like pop it thing I bought on Amazon. And there are other ones where the numbers go one through 10 and then 11 through 20, you know, this direction, but the dividers in it are vertical. I don't like that. I don't know why that bugs me, but I feel like the, the row should be vertical this way because the numbers are increasing this way. It doesn't make sense to have it, have it this way. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I think this is super cute. I love it. Um, and if I need, and I'm like, oh, I picked back, I can just go back. Oh, three rows. The only problem is if I have it sitting there and somebody else thinks it's fun to go pop the numbers, then I'm in trouble. So, <laughs> so I was using that on my sweater for the repeats that I needed to do. Okay. Next we have... In this cute bag, this is by Eggs and Crackers Makes, Robin. Um, she sent me this cute bag with little skulls. It's a cute Halloween one, but it's not too, I don't like gruesome Halloween. I like cutesy, fun, playful Halloween. So I like this bag, but she sent that to me this last year. Or maybe the year before. I'm trying to remember how long I've had it. Well, this is the wrong bag. I'll come back to this one. <laughs> That's not what I'm working on. Where is that bag? It's right here. In this bag, another Halloween bag. I made this one last year. I showed it on episode two of this um, channel. I made it from a Halloween tea towel. Okay. I have some new yarns in my shop. I'll share about that now because it's related to this project. Um, I have the Cinnamon Spice and Everything Nice collection, and I have them in gumball mini skeins and full skeins, and I've wound them into cakes, and I have been knitting a sock with it, a striped sock. So... Um, this set, I'll tell you a little bit more about later, but this is, um, let's see, I started at the cuff and I did 64 stitches. I did one by one ribbing for 18 rounds and then I did eight rounds of each color before I switched. And then I did a heel flap, just a traditional slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And I'm almost done. I just need to do orange next and then the toe. And then this sock will be done. But I'm only doing one sock because I talked about these socks being a shop sample. Well, shop samples I used to knit them and then give them away as gifts because I would take photos with them and then I would give them away or I would use them. And then I wished that I still had them for future photos or to take to shows like that, things like that. So I stopped um, giving shop sample things away. Like I stopped, I started making them for a shop sample that I would then keep. And I realized if I'm going to keep them and not use them and wear them, why in the world do I need two? 
I only need one. I figured that out after I made this pair. <laughs> also because then I have to store twice as many. All I need is for people to see what it looks like, knit up, an example of a pattern, things like that. So I'm going to knit this one sock and then this project will be done. But then I will have at least 10 grams left of each colorway and I'm going to use this to knit a pair of socks in a different manner and these will be ones that I will be able to keep or give away as gifts. So um, the cinnamon spice and everything nice came from my Bon Bon mini collections that I started back in 2021 I think um, and I could only do them for maybe six months because I couldn't source the packaging anymore. Um, so I, I stopped doing those. I just do lots of gumball minis, but they were 10 gram mini skeins. And so I wanted to see what could I make with five 10 gram minis. And I made these socks. So I used, I think 30 grams of this honeycomb colorway and then I striped in the other colors, the other five colorways, and it used almost exactly 10 grams. So I, I will tell you how I made these because I'm going to make another pair with my leftovers. So I should have counted how many stitches I cast on. I'm pretty sure I cast on 64 stitches. I could probably tell if I see where I started, and I count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 6, 28, 30. Okay, I cast on 60 stitches for this pair. That's what I prefer to wear, and these are socks for me. I wore them once and decided they needed to be shop samples, so I pulled them aside. <laughs> um, so I knit two by two ribbing after casting on 60 stitches, and I did that for probably 18, yep, 18 rounds. And then I switched to my first mini skein and I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I did 10 rounds of one of the coordinating colors and then went back to the main color for four rounds, 10 rounds, four rounds, 10 rounds, four rounds, 10, four. And then I did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And I continued the 10 rounds, four rounds, 10 rounds, four rounds, all the way down to four rounds here before doing the toe. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stripes, color stripes, and then the heels. So each one of these colors I used two times in per sock, so four times total. And I had just enough yarn. So I'm going to do that with these socks or these minis because I have I will have um, at least 11 grams of each skein. Some I will have 13 because I used different amounts because of the cuff and the heel and the toe will use a different amount. Um, and I have different numbers of stripes also by the time I'm finished here. They're not all perfectly even. Um, but I have enough that I could make a pair doing the same formula and I'm going to use my cream soda base for the main colorway. Now I don't need 100 grams. It took me 30 ish, maybe 32 to do this, but um, I don't have this in mini skeins right now currently in my shop, so I just grabbed one of these skeins and I'm going to, because this is such a good like color ready have for everything. <laughs> it's a good neutral, so I'll use it again and again. So I'm going to make this type of sock with these minis and main skein. So that will be what I will make that I can keep for myself. It would also be a good shop sample, but it would also be good for me or somebody. 
a, a friend. I just think that will be more fun than knitting three three socks like that are all the same. Plus, I wouldn't have enough to do three socks with these minis, the 20 gram minis. Okay. I have one more project that I have started and it's in the bag that I was telling you about and I just barely cast it on and I'm actually not going to work on it until this weekend. But this is my sister's infinity cowl, Emily's infinity cowl. This is a free pattern on her website on um, Yarn Prairie. I think it's yarnbrary.com. She's switching things over to Salt City Knits here soon, but um, I have shared this pattern previously on other episodes, um, but you can go download it there. I'll show you just the beginning of it. It is a free pattern. Ooh, gotta cover my face so it will focus. It doesn't really matter. I have uh, it laminated and so it's reflecting and looking terrible, but um, it's just a tube that's double thickness. So you knit, you knit a tube and join the ends together and seam it together. Um, and it makes the stripes vertical instead of being horizontal, which is what I like because I've done a lot of horizontal things, but I like having something that's a little different. So this one uses approximately 140 grams of fingering weight yarn in scraps or all the same color, whatever you want. Um, a US 3 needle, 24 inch cable, and you do a provisional cast on. So she calls for a crochet provisional cast on, and that's what I did. So the blue is the provisional cast on edge, and then I knit three rounds, no, two rounds just to get the project started and ready to go but I'll show you the yarns that I picked out, the scraps. I wasn't planning on making this, but I was just looking through my scraps for some something else. I can't remember what I was looking for. And a couple of them just called out to me, like, make something with me today. So, <laughs> so I pulled them out, decided I'm gonna work with those. So let's get them all out. I'll start with these. Four. I just think those are very pretty. And then to coordinate with them, I can't hold them all together. I have these. Now, I know the makers of most of these, but I don't know the colorway name of all of them. This one is a dandelion and dogwood colorway. And I knit a pair of socks for summer sock camp a year ago with this. And I had some left over. I knit my Lucky Star socks pattern. I'm trying to see if I can find it in my feed. It is... Oh, great. I didn't put it on there. Oh, well. <laughs> but from Dandelion and Dogwood. And it's super cute. And then I have Hedgehog Fibers yarn in the colorway Seed. Then I have a Yarn Cafe Creations. I don't have the name of this colorway. And then I have a, another Dandelion and Dogwood um, yarn. And this one is Woodland Wonderland and it has little bits of gold flecks, and it's a sparkle base. Some of these are sparkle base, some of these are not, which I kind of think is fun. And then I have some of my peach left from my Blushing Lilacs fade. And then I've got um, just a couple of my own little scraps from other random dyes that I did. So I think that will be really a pretty combination of colors. Just nothing too bright or garish. And I'm, I just wanna make this for fun because I think it's so pretty, but this will go in my gift drawer. 
So now I've got to redo this. Darn it. I made a mess of it. I don't like to put my labels in the center because then they end up all crumpled. And also if I try to pull them out, then the middle can be a mess and I can't always get it back in. So I wrap it around the outside of my skein. And I just tuck the tail in and I just keep my yarn with the label like that. And it also helps keep the yarn nice and tidy. So that's how I store when I keep the labels, which I obviously didn't with all of these. <laughs> but that's how I keep mine. So I am going on a trip. And this takes me into, oh, I had one more. One more. This takes me into my shop news that um, I'm going on a trip, which means my shop won't be closed. I'm going to leave it open so that you can purchase patterns specifically, but you can get yarns, but I won't be shop shipping. It, shipping will be paused September 10th through the 17th. So if you order um, early enough the, on the 9th or before, if it's too late on the 9th, then it's too late, but um, early enough, then I can get it shipped out. So Saturday and before I can ship out but then it will be paused because we're gonna have a little trip and it's gonna be a road trip. And of course my favorite part of a road trip, well, one of my favorite parts is the project. Now I like to cast on a new project in the car and it's just specifically my, my vacation project. Um, but this time I decided to cast it on beforehand because I thought this would be a little bit fiddly for me to focus on a provisional cast on picking up those stitches in the car. So I decided to get it ready to go. So now it's ready to go and I can just knit. But I don't want anything that's too complex because in the car it's hard to focus. Also I don't have tons of room so I can't bring you know this massive thing. So this is wonderful. Now I might see about moving this to a smaller bag because we are going to the happiest place on earth and I love knitting in line to pass the time. So I also for that want a project that I can start or stop wherever. I don't have to worry about putting it away quickly in the middle of a row. So just going around in a circle. So I usually do socks, sometimes hats, but this time I'm gonna do a cowl. So this will be perfect for that. My only concern is this is a bigger circumference. Doing socks, it's small and I can squish it down in my bag. Now I don't know, now maybe I need socks. My daughter's home, hold on. Okay, where was I? Okay, but shop news, shipping is paused for a week. Okay, let's, I skipped happy mail. How could I skip happy mail? Let me go back to happy mail, then our giveaway. I got the cutest, cutest gift in the mail recently from my friend Jules, so sweet Violet. She was watching my podcast and I was talking about how it's ridiculous. I have an overabundance of project bags, which I love. I love to collect them. I have several of hers. Um, yet all of my cross stitch projects are in Ziploc baggies. It's a shame. <laughs> so she sewed me an embroidery cross stitch stitch pouch little envelope pouch here. Look how cute that is with her logo right there and her favorite precious Liberty fabrics in a rainbow. It's so cute. I've been holding it here all neat and tidy to show you for the last couple of weeks. Um, I didn't want to shove it in my bag of projects. <laughs> before I could show you. It has a cute little velvet ribbon zipper pull 
and this very beautiful um, linen backing is just beautiful. So I'm going to go put one of my projects in there. I now have a project for a project bag for my cross stitch. So that actually makes it a little bit more fun and motivating to work on. <laughs> oh, I like this one. This one right here. What's that one called? I love that. I also really like this one. Very cute. Thank you so much. Um, she and I have done some swaps back and forth over the years. And it's fun to have friends that you can do that with. And I especially love that in other countries because we get to try treats and foods from other places. That's really fun. Oh, I could tie it. I'm like, oh, I'll tie it up again, make it all cute. I've got to go put my project in it. It's tempting to just keep it all tidy like that, but. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the giveaway. So I have mentioned before that I have, um, what am I trying to say? A whole bunch of project bags and I sorted through my project bags and I am, um, using some of those as giveaways because they're fantastic bags. But how many does one girl need? I mean a lot, I need a lot. But by doing this, it enables me to collect new ones. So then I can make myself new ones, buy new ones. So this is a bag from Caroline Loves to Sew. And it is a beautiful bag with a pocket on the inside and her logo. This cute fabric there. It's a drawstring bag. It's like a medium sized drawstring bag, good for shawls. And then I pulled one of my mystery confection yarns to go with this. I have a hard time with with this, anytime I have a skein that's like slightly different than the rest of a batch or something, I set it aside and I label it as mystery confection because I can't sell it as the same colorway as the rest. But sometimes they're my favorites. This one is one of those and I held on to it for a while and I decided I cannot keep every one of these. <laughs> so this was one of my favorites. That was my um, mystery con mystery confection just means it's non-repeatable. So, so to enter to win this, um, I just want you to leave a sweet comment about anything. Tell me what would you make with some of the yarns that I showed you earlier today? Um, what do you like to do when you're on a road trip? I mean, I imagine that we all love to work on projects, but do you have something special that you have like traditions on a road trip? You always do a certain thing. Um, anything, just leave me a sweet comment. So that's all you have to do. And you have to be a subscriber. And then on my next episode, I will pick a winner from the comments. So I appreciate you joining me here today. And I look forward to seeing you when I return and I have some really fun things planned. I forgot to tell you about that yarn collection. Now I'm mad. <sighs> Let's go back. My cinnamon spice and everything nice. This came from the Bon Bon Minis set that were 10 gram minis, but I have now dyed them in full skeins and 20 gram mini sets but they've sold out so fast. I only have three skeins left out of all of them at the time I'm recording this, who knows when you see this, but um, I will be, when I return, dyeing those again. I will be restocking it and I will let you know about that. So thanks for joining me and I will see you again soon. Bye.